Thanks for clicking on State of the City. My name's Todd Prafke, and I'm the City Administrator here in St. Peter, Minnesota. Today is uh, Friday, December 15th. It's about 9 o'clock in the morning. And, and you might be wondering, well, why is there a picture of a kitty and a puppy on, on my screen and, and not a picture of Todd? Well, um, I had read someplace that if you do a video blog and you show pictures of puppies and kitties, um, the number of people that watch your video blog go up. So, so I'm giving it a try. We'll see if it works for you. Also, um, this is supposed to be a special edition of State of the City. Uh, it's supposed to be talking mostly about property taxes and taxes in general and where we're spending your money. And so um, this is certainly probably um, a happier thought than paying taxes, but but it's one of those things and it pays for services in town. So, so let me jump right to what's going on with that. This first uh, bit of information that I'm showing you um, shows a comparison of tax rates from 2012 through estimated at 2018. And so I think one of the most significant things that you'll see here, and, and, and we call this tax rate now, but in the olden days it used to be called the mill rate. Some people still know it as the mill rate. And I think one of the most significant things that you see from this data is that it goes up and down. It goes, again, both up and down. And, and I think that's really reflective of the council's position, which is they try really diligently to make sure they only ask um, for the taxpayers for money for what they they believe that they need to make it go. And in some years they need less, they ask for less. In some years they need more, they ask for more. And I think this data um, helps demonstrate that that's true. One of the other items that I want to mention in relation to um, taxes, and, and this is what I think most people are wondering about, what does it mean to me? What does it mean to my house? What does it mean to my business? And so this is all information that you can find on our website as well. And underneath this, you'll see that there'll be a link to where that is and a page number that you can go to on this PDF file that has lots of this data. Uh, but one thing I do want to mention is that a $150,000 house in St. Peter for city taxes only, city taxes is that if, if there's no valuation change, your taxes are gonna go up, well, a little bit less than 12 bucks from the city side. Now, if your taxes do go up, let's say 5%, you'll be on the hook for about 52 and a half bucks uh, additional in city wide property taxes. Again, this table is included in our information, so if you wanna go and kinda of look at where yours is at, um, you'll be able to find that out, um, along with the information that you were sent by uh, Nicollet County. Here's some more data that's important. I'll go through this pretty quick, but this shows kind of a summary from year to year to year of our revenues and our expenditures. And I think one of the important things that you'll want to note down here is that we're planning on transferring about $619,000 out of the general fund. And we're doing that for three primary purposes, one of which is, is we're getting that additional money um, from one-time income. So it's mostly from building permit stuff for some of the big projects that are gonna go on in St. Peter in the next year. And so since it's one-time money, we shouldn't really spend it to um, pay for gas or pay for insurance or pay for people or anything like that because those are ongoing costs. Um, one-time revenue for one-time expenses, I think is the mantra that we've tried to use and I think has been wise financial planning for us. Um, um, it also keeps our reserves at about a 46% level, which is well within um, the policy that the council's established as to having reserves between 35 and 50%. And you might ask, what do you need reserves of 35%? And that, that's measured by, at any point, we kind of have 35% um, of the full year's expenditures in the bank. Well, I shouldn't say at any point, at the beginning and end of the year. One of the reasons that we do that is because cities like, like us get paid maybe, um, well, well, cities get paid only twice a year. Tax revenues come in and local government aid from the state only comes in in July and December. So you gotta have enough money to get from January to July and then again from August to December. And so that's why that re reserve number is an important number for us. I wanna mention here, here's some uh, a, a bar chart um, that shows our revenues and expenditures that are planned for um, for a, a series of years starting in 2014 through 2018. And here you can see our revenues are going up. That's that 600 and some thousand dollars that I just talked about that they're transferring one-time revenue from one-time expenditures. And you'll see our expenditures are going up just a little bit here, um, really driven by a lot of inflationary things that go on. I also wanna mention revenues because I think that's important. Here's revenues for for those series of years that you see. And so the green is the, is the bar for the 2018 year. 
this really shows that difference from what we see normally and this is that additional money that I just talked about that building permit money that's six hundred plus thousand uh, dollars that's really where it's coming from there's a few in other places um, but mostly it's pretty steady um, well here's this one though that's it's true I mean we're raising property taxes just a little bit and that that bar shows that we're raising property taxes I'm going to show you two pie charts one is about um, revenues for 2017 and one is about revenues for 2018 and there's two significant portions of this that I want you to know about first of all it's the gold or yellow portion here and the blue portion up here this gold represents local government aid which is money that we get back from the state of Minnesota and the blue represents what what portion of the budget local property taxpayers are paying um, as a part of their property tax bill and so you'll note that from 2017 to 2018 this part of the pie chart is going down um, it's down just a little bit from here so 2018 is smaller than 2017 and and conversely the blue here the property tax portion that we're paying as property taxpayers in 2018 is a little bit bigger than it was in 2017 that's really related to local government aid has been flat it hasn't kept up with inflation and so to make up with that there's a little bit more burden um, that's being taken on um, by local property tax players like like you and me one other one that I want to mention about um, budget for the 2018 year this this pie chart shows where we're spending money whether it's on transfers which I talked about that six hundred and some thousand dollars in transfers um, or whether it's on um, professional services or expenses or well the biggest portion of this is people we need people to mow the lawns and and respond when you have an emergency call and to plow the streets and to do all those things that are necessary within the city uh, to keep things going providing rec programming and lots of different things so anyway I, I want you to see that and, and again underneath here um, you're going to see some additional information related to a, a link that you can get to to see the 60 some odd pages of budget information that the council sees and so one of the, the things that I think is most important is that if you have the time and you have the interest it might be really worth your while to take a few moments to read the memo that we have included for that um, it explains a lot and provides a lot of information in relation to where we're spending money how we're spending money what have been priorities for the city council Council. and um, and and really I think it's important for taxpayers who want to know to be able to have the opportunity to know that so that's the place to really get a lot of that information or give me a call or give Paul a call would be happy to answer here we go another picture of puppies and kitties again hopefully this drives how many people want to watch <laughs> state of the city now now I got a couple other ones that I want to mention quickly solar choice program we have a lot of people that have subscribed to solar energy through our solar garden which is located near Owatonna and um, I think it's working well for them so far we're excited to have so many actually um, our ratio of, of folks that are subscribing is higher than Rochester Owatonna well any of the simple community so congratulations to us good for all of those of you that have subscribed if you want more information about solar choice you can go to our website and we kind of have a uh, a search bar up at the top but you can go to this portion of our website and um, see more about how you can subscribe to solar energy in st. Peter I also want to mention Traverse Green um, this is the year of uh, thinking about um, housing for people that are in working families and so we want to really mention to folks that we continue to have opportunities at Traverse Green and we're really excited about being able to provide affordable housing opportunities for working families even if you don't have a lot of cash or money up front there's ways that we can maybe help you get into a home of your own in St. Peter so we're excited hey by the way that neighborhood the new park out there the, some of the crews and we had some assistance from sense to serve and Rivers Edge Hospital crews to help us get that park together it's really beautiful jungle gym equipment out there I also want to mention this one um, there are some free rides on MRVT Minnesota River Valley Transit I love to call it mr. VT mr. VT so on Monday the 18th and Tuesday the 21st um, please make sure you call ahead get your reservation in at this 888 number um, so that you can get a free ride back and forth to Lesueur or St. Peter or Mankato so this is just for the corridor route um, and we want to have people give it a try we've had a lot of people that have used it and just rave about it um, the bus goes back and forth between our three communities five or six times on those days so um, it's really convenient and while it's free 
go visit somebody or call one of your friends to come up here and have lunch with you someplace in St. Peter. That's a great way to utilize this service. They can catch the bus in Mankato and come to St. Peter, have lunch, and go back for free. What a great thing. River's Edge Hospital, speaking of great things, this is their urgent care cash services. Wanted you to be able to see this. I know at the Prafke House, we used a lot of these services from time to time. And you know, sometimes before we even went to the emergency room or to the doctor, we knew exactly what the problem was because we've been through it a bunch of times. Um, this is a great way to get that test done or get that information and that um, help provided to you for cash and very inexpensively. One last thing I have for you before I let you go. Um, the council's established a process for providing donations to well, really what's a part of history and developing new history within St. Peter for the Minnesota Square Park Pavilion. You can see an image of what it is and, and what's going on there. Uh, the council is very excited about this and so we have a process whereby people can get recognized for providing a donation to that. So if you're interested, give me a call or watch for these. These will be coming out. You'll see more of this information as we get into the new year as well. Um, so we're really, really excited about that and the opportunity it provides for the community. Here we go. Email me at that email address or check out our website or certainly you can like us on Facebook. We'd love it if you'd like us on Facebook or, or for the sake of the puppies and kitties. We'd really like it if you would like us on Facebook or give us a call. We'd be happy to visit. Thanks for clicking on this edition, special edition of, of State of the City. And if I don't see you before now in the holidays, um, if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas to you. Um, if you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a great holiday season and a wonderful new year. And uh, uh, thanks for clicking on State of the City and thanks for all you do uh, within our great community here in St. Peter. Uh, have a great day.